Uh, it is my pleasure to describe the latest developments in Pack Bio, including uh, that of the SQL 2 system. Uh, but before I get into the SQL 2 system, I would like to spend just a few minutes highlighting uh, several new developments in various areas, which all serve as a foundation onto which the throughput increase of the SQL 2 system is leveraged. So with four topics in this short talk, I can only present at this time a very high level um, with the aim that they'll stimulate your interest so that you'll actually come and have a visit with us in our suite. So the latest sequencing chemistry that we developed on the SQL system offers further increases in read length and in throughput. For long DNA fragments, for long DNA fragments greater than, say, 20 kilobases and the continuous long read approach, the performance stats that are shown here and, and also available on our website. Uh, I only want to note this in context that we are pleased uh, that the scientific community is corroborating the high consensus accuracy of PAC biosequencing for genomes that are properly segregated into their haplotypes. So this is a slide that was actually recently presented at the Plant and Animal Genome Conference down in San Diego in January by both Angre and Sergey Korn, who work with Adam Flippy at the NIH, showing that consensus accuracy of about Q45 is reached in these particular assemblies, thereby no longer requiring short read sequencing polishing. And in some cases, that such polishing actually can hurt and decrease the accuracy. This was demonstrated here on a bovine genome assembly, and there is, in fact, a talk tonight at 8.50 by Ed Rice describing this approach and the trio of binning in more detail. So uh, kind of near and dear to my heart, I'm actually uh, really excited about the latest advances that we made last year and that we released in, at the end of the fall uh, in, the, in our other mode of smart sequencing. So as you may know, the circular topology of the smart belt template, it's actually possible to go round and round, and, and basically that gives you uh, in sequence both strands of the double-stranded molecule, both forward and reverse, multiple times. And this actually allows for intermolecular consensus that leads to very long, very highly accurate, excuse me, long reads. With this con circular consensus sequencing, or what we call CCS, we've been able to completely shift the distribution of read links such that most of the data is now coming from very, very long reads, translating into many passes of the DNA molecule, and thereby allowing for efficient CCS for much longer DNA fragments than ever before. Previously, we were actually somewhat truncated down to, say, like 5 or 6 KB. And now we can actually get fragments up to 20 KB. In the example that you can see here, the average read length is 84,000 bases. Half of that data is in reads greater than 167,000 bases. And because our random error profile with PacBio, it doesn't take you that many passes to actually get to accurate single molecule reads. So you can see here that with four passes on average, you can get Q20 or 99% accurate. And at 10 passes, you can get up to Q30 or 99.9% .9 accurate. So then what you end up with and what you are actually interested in is long and highly accurate sequencing reads, the exact number of which, of course, depends on your insert size. In this particular example, we had a 10 KB insert size. There's almost 300,000 reads that are greater than Q20. And in fact, you can see from this distribution here that the mode of the distribution is, in fact, very close to Q40, which at this read length are near perfect reads. With just, um, and just as with the CLR, you also have the same lack of sequencing bias, which is a hallmark of PAC bio sequencing. So what I'd like to do now is just share with you a few examples of what this new paradigm shift in sequencing, having long and accurate reads, can provide you. So in the area of targeted sequencing, Stuart Scott from Mount Sinai at, AG, at uh, ASHG last year highlighted the power of CCS reads from pharmacogenetic and Mendelian disease genes. Shown here is an example of an 11 uh, KB uh, base pair in size, or KB piece, uh, that shows highly, the use of highly accurate full-length CCS reads that now allowed him to very cleanly detect and phase all the variation, and in fact, to easily segregate these into their respective alleles. Each row in the window represents an individual CCS read, and you can see how clean the data are. 
In contrast, the bottom of the data we're using short reads, in fact, don't allow phasing and actually can sometimes miss certain types of variants. For example, here's a 25 base pair uh, insertion that was actually easily detected by the PacBio CCS data. So in the area of metagenomics, um, we actually predict that the CCS paradigm will be particularly impactful as these complex communities can now, can now be resolved with exquisite resolution. Just, as, just two examples that I'll, I'll highlight here for you. The first is a new preprint from the bio archives. This is in collaboration with Ben Callahan for the first time showing you can resolve the fact that bacteria actually have more than one copy of the 16S gene. And of course, not unsurprisingly, they're, they're not all the same sequence. So rather than collapsing this into one sequence for the databases, with PacBio CCS data, it now allows for resolving each copy precisely, leading to better species and strain resolution. In this particular example here, the Staph aureus has, in fact, six copies of the gene, three of which are identical and three of which are actually unique copies and, and distinct sequences. So in the area of shotgun metagenomics, CCS now allows the generation of highly accurate sequences of DNA fragments on the order of eight to 10 kilobases. Data that are shown here are from a collaboration with the company's second genome. They're looking at complex microbial communities so they find that with using PacBio CCS data, there is no assembly required for gene discovery, and that twice the number of unique error-free genes were recovered with PacBio compared to short read sequencing. This is based on a per thousand dollar consumable cost unit, thereby showing better, higher quality results as well as greater cost efficiency. Similarly, six and a half times more proteins of interest were found and on contigs that were five times larger on average. So in the area of full-length RNA sequencing, or isoseq, data with the latest release are also used in conjunction with improvements that we've actually made in the previous release, too, on our isoseq 3 pipeline. Using both of these in combination, we were able to recover 20% more genes per smart cell on average. My colleague Liz Zhang has developed algorithms to use genetic variation between the two alleles to now be able to segregate the transcripts into their appropriate alleles and to call allele-specific splicing in a new tool called isophase. Then in, 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 a, in a new area, that is single-cell full-length RNA-seq, you may have heard Hagen Tilner's talk yesterday showing examples of this in the brain. And then tonight at 9.10, my own colleague Jason Underwood will present another study on this exciting new application. And then finally for our CCS data, um, for human whole genome sequencing and de novo assembly, this is a subject that's actually worthy of a separate talk in and of itself. We don't have time right now. Unfortunately, that will happen tonight at 7.50 when our own CEO, Mike Hunkapiller, will give his presentation on this topic alone. And so I do encourage you each to attend. So quickly, before I turn to the SQL 2, um, our own structural variant caller is called PBSV. It, in our first version of the caller, we were able to detect deletions and insertions, and this has been utilized in the community. Here's just actually one example of a recent discovery of a novel structural variant as a causative variation for a particular type of epilepsy. We've done yet additional work on PBSV, and so in addition to being able to call deletions and insertions, we now also call inversions and translocations, and now being able to call previously from 50 base pair insertion deletions, we're now able to sensitively detect down to 20 base pair insertion deletions. Uh, and, this act and we've also, in the algorithm, we've improved, um, we now deliver, um, instead of um, approximate, we now have consensus-based precise breakpoint calls, as well as improved trio and population calling, as well as other improvements. On to library prep protocols that we've been doing. So I'm happy to state that uh, our latest addition to our Smart Bell template prep kit was launched this past Monday, version two. Um, it is now compatible with all library sizes and is convenient single tube additive workflow and prep can be completed in about four hours. This also lends itself well, as you've heard the other vendors just previously speak, to automation. 
So in addition to um, just being able to, to, to do this in, in a quick fashion, this also has opened up new opportunities. And so one of these is a low DNA input protocol that allows for library prep and sequencing and assembly of, of genome assembly of individuals from small organisms. So think things like insects, et cetera. So in collaboration with Mara Lawaznik and Matt Berman at the Welcome Sanger Trust Institute, the protocol has been used so far to sequence individuals from mosquitoes, Drosophila rectiflies in collaboration with Andy Clark, all starting with only 100 nanograms of input material. And in the one case, as you can see, there was actually a parasitic flatworm starting with an input amount of 45 nanograms, and we got an assembly of 382 megabases on the genome with a contig in 50 of 3.8 megabases. And then for uh, microbial multiplexing, so we have released uh, an additional 16 barcode adapters uh, and allowing for, depending on your genome size, for pooling of a total genome size of 40 megabases of content. This allows you, for example, to sequence and completely assemble the genomes of 10 bacteria in just a single smart cell, and that's a runtime of 10 hours. So some of the contigs that are actually shown here are larger than one, and that's because those particular bacterium have um, plasmids in addition to their bacterial chromosomes. Okay, so now the fun stuff. So on to SQL 2. So everything I've told you thus far is actually just amplified greater with the SQL 2 system. So it now features an eight-fold higher multiplexing capabilities as compared to our current SQL system. You can see that the overall smart cells actually look fairly similar to our previous version. And of course, we've made engineering adjustments to our platform on the SQL 2 system to accommodate this increase in multiplex. This is the largest multiplex increase that we have done to date, both relative and, of course, absolute. You get an eight-fold increase in yield, which translates significantly to reduced project times as well as reduced project cost, all while having the equivalent performance. And so just to kind of give you a sense of where the performance is at, um, here's a comparison of a CCS-type run. This is data just overlaying SQL and SQL 2 system results. And as you can see, the read length distributions are essentially identical. Now you simply get eight times the uh, output of raw data. In this particular example, it's 318 gigabases. And it also, of course, translates into eight times the yield of highly accurate long reads. In addition, we've made improvements to the raw read accuracy so that now with the SQL system, oops, go forward. So now with uh, the SQL 2 system, as I showed you previously, there were 10 passes that were actually required to achieve QV30 um, on the SQL box. Now on the SQL 2 system, you only, it's reduced now to eight passes to reach the same quality of QV30, which of course then translates into higher CCS yields overall. Um, so here's an example of an internal CCS run. This is done actually in collaboration with Hagen Tillner, who presented, who showed the first five rows in a talk yesterday. Um, since then, and this is for a single cell isoseq experiment. Since then, uh, we've actually generated additional cells. Four more cells shown at the bottom, rows six through nine, have been processed, um, showing very good and, and more consistent performance. Um, the whole table actually, of course, shows you that things are still in development and improving during this early product phase. So that you'll notice the first three cells had a little bit lower input. We've actually been able to adjust some of our, our workflow parameters, and, and all the subsequent cells are now showing about twice the amount of data output per smart cell. Um, in terms of continuous long reads and how is the system performing, so compared to the SQL system in the, in the first column, there's now again an approximate eight-fold increase in the number of reads and the resulting yield, um, ranging here for uh, various controls between 80 and 100 gigabases, all while showing very similar read links as to the current SQL system. Um, you may have seen in a press release recently from us or heard, we are in currently early access phase with the SQL 2 system. We've placed the boxes at five selected customer sites. This is to do testing performance, uh, both with our own controls that we've sent them as well as real world samples. And this is using a pre-release chemistry. You'll notice on our boxes the 0 0.9. And of course, as we get feedback from the sites and we evaluate their, their runs, uh, we'll be fine tuning our chemistry for, and as well as the instrument and software for our commercial release, which we're still on target for a second quarter of this year release. 
Um, the early access program, I, I was very excited to actually see this. This was pretty exciting for me. So uh, it, went off, it started off, in my opinion, with a bang. So Hudson Alpha was the first customer site. And just the night before Jeremy Smuts's talk at our own PAG developers conference, um, the very first SQL 2 smart cell from a customer site completed. Um, and Jeremy actually presented these results the very next morning. So this is a sorghum sample. It had 63 gigabases of data, and this was collected uh, in 10 hours, uh, which he's now subsequently after that has uh, completed an assembly of this. Um, and what you'll see in the, in the assembly of stats here is that we have a high-quality genome assembly that was actually more complete and over an order of magnitude uh, more contiguous than the current reference. And it was also highly accurate, this being greater than QV45 in accuracy. Um, and so just to kind of show you some high-level overview stats of where the SQL system is and how our early um, access is going and the number of runs we've done. So over about three to four weeks on average operation at each of the sites, uh, we've had a total of 58 smart cells that have completed running. About 20% of these were our own, again, control samples that we sent. 80% were coming from customer samples from their ongoing research. And I'm showing all of the runs here, so I'm not cherry picking any runs. One smart cell failed up to this point, and with regard to performance on the long reads, we had 27 smart cells, and they showed an average of 67.4 gigabases, which is about seven times that that we're currently seeing in our field over, the, over our field installs. And then for the CCS, we had 31 smart cells that gave an average yield of 250 gigabases, and that's about 11 times compared to the current SQL output globally that we see. The average CCS yield was almost 17 gigabases, and the average read links were 62 and a half kilobases. And so to summarize, the early access, we're actually very pleased. Our customers are excited about it, and we're again on track for full commercial release coming in the second quarter. And then finally, just to end, I want to, I want to again, con we're continually uh, extremely grateful to each of you, um, the scientific community, for continuing to apply the technology to your research. By now, there's over 5,000 peer-reviewed publications, and I can't wait to see what new discoveries will be made this year using the SQL and the SQL 2 system. So thank you for your time and attention.